Alright then folks, we are back with some more as the Gundam Generations Genesis. So as you guys probably saw on the opening stage, I went and unlocked like every goddamn ship I could. So my whole my guy or er, my gallery is completely full, I have everything. My ships are now completely full, I have everything I could have. I don't have all the unicorn stuff yet. And yeah, so I got I woke up at like 3 30 this morning because I've been having problems sleeping for reasons. And I seriously, it's like 6.30 right now. Spent three hours going back and trying to get the Thoroughbred. Longest goddamn mission ever. The Rockellum, super easy. The Nahel Argama, that one, it's actually surprisingly easy because if you kill my cello, you get like half the bar. And then the ref or the Refined Argama or whatever it is, Enhanced Argama, that one took so goddamn long to get. Like, it was ridiculous. But I have them all now. But as it turns out, the Rockellum can't go on the planet either. But yeah, the raw Callum, which is probably at the bottom. Yeah, the raw Callum can't go on the planet either, and the story we're about to do is, I believe, exclusively on the planet. So we have the we have the solid on now. I got that a little while ago, and then we have the Nahal Argama, which can go on, but it doesn't have anti-air, which is annoying. It should, but it doesn't. But yeah. Anyway, we are starting Hathaway's Flash. Because it's two missions long. Or at least I'm told it's two missions long. I don't know if it actually is. Or the brilliant Hathaway. Hathaway. Uh, I guess that works too. But this is a continuation of the novel of the book. Not the Bellatrix's children as you're probably thinking the manga. This is the continuation of the book. So in this one, um, this is Hathaway by the way. He goes by Mufti. Hathaway killed Kest in this story. He shot her with a missile, I believe, uh, from the shield of the Yegan, and it killed her. So he's being stalked by either her ghost or just the spirit, her, like, uh, the idea of her. I'm not actually sure. I think it's a new type ghost, but I don't think that was a thing just yet. That didn't become a thing till like, Unicorn or a little bit earlier. But, yeah, so this is the story of this is set in uh, either 100 UC or 101 UC. I'm not exactly sure, but it's in... Or 105, because I can't read. But yeah, it's set in 105, you see the uh, Xeon falling apart and losing its independence. Went over really, really well, except for a singular group rebelled. Well, two groups. But one of them got destroyed in one of the F91 manga. So we won't know about them yet, but... Only two groups came out of it, and... Hathaway is leading it as Mufti. In the meantime, since uh, Unicorn... Or, well, since... Killing Cass, which it's been 12 years... He's gone to college, he's graduated, and he's a biologist or something like that, or a botanist. So he's allowed free reign from going into space and to the planet, but the Federation's restricted a lot of uh, a lot of trade to the planet, and a lot more people are forced to go into space. But they're not building more colonies, so everything's becoming over is becoming like overpopulated and everything, so people are getting mad. But yeah, I figure we do this one because it'll be two stages long, and then next week we can focus on Unicorn and we can be done. Oh hey, yet another undersea stage. This makes three. Four. Jabro doesn't count though. There's literally one spot of water. <laughs> Okay, I will say this. This is one of these stories I know the least about because I read the book maybe five years ago. It's been a while. But, um, so the original terms of the One Year War is they knew that they couldn't annex Eon outright, so they set it up so in 30 years, the war would, or 20, 20-ish years, the Republic would be annexed because what they would do is they'd send a bunch of students from Zeon to the Federation, get them used to being part of the Federation, so when they grew up, they would make laws that would make it easier to integrate with the Federation. They talk about that a little bit in Unicorn. But Federation got a Federation, you know? So, this is the story where 
uh, the if Zeon won, they'd move everyone to Germany and just make everyone else leave Germany. This is where that comes from. Basically, the rich are buying out whole estates of land, like they're buying out portions of the earth, and then they're just kicking everyone out there so they can have their own like individual nature preserves while everyone else is forced into space. That's the G. Yeah, now, I don't think there's any quests for this, but there might be. I'll go check. But I went through and I checked, and I think only unicorns left. But I've gotten literally all the other quests as well. Is Kenneth Slegg, the cousin of Slegger. Or great cousin. Great great cousin? He's related to Slegger. That's all you need to know. And she's GG named after Spain. Oh, um, just for the record, in Bellatroika's children, Amuro is confirmed dead. So is Char. Like, they find the bodies. Well, they only let top brass on. It was clearly you were hiding something. I remember this one from Spirits. This one's really annoying, because, like, you start on one side of the map and you have to cross the map before your base gets destroyed. Except for the enemy could attack your base on, like, the very beginning of the battle. Oh, and we saw it at the end. Well, we will see it at the end of Unicorn, but in the actual show, they showed 
a Carl Gustav when they're showing the Anaheim base on the planet. You know, or this base, whatever it was. Uh, but you saw one Carl Gustav. This is what those are from, the Messer and the Carl Gustav. I love the Messer, though. Imagine a Giradoga that completely, like, armored out and actually looks menacing. We might be using them. I haven't decided yet. We'll definitely either be using the G or the Penelope or both. Because they're badass. Okay. Yeah, he was a botanist. They're trying to rebuild the Earth's uh, environment using DNA samples they have from all the species that are dead. Of course, as we know, that doesn't actually turn out very well. They return Earth to a semi-Earth normal state in Gaia gear. Which is the uh, totally, totally, totally uncanon sequel. Um, which Gaia Gear was in twenty third, or yeah, twenty thirty. You see, they try to clone Char, but like everyone clones Char, so there's like thirty Chars running around, and they all go and fight each other. Look it up; it's really uh, out there. Maybe she's a new type. Which, Hathaway is a new type, by the way. He's not as powerful as Amuro, but he's, like, way more powerful than Bright or Mirai ever were. Oh, and she doesn't exist anymore, but he actually has a little sister who we know nothing about. We know she was alive during CCA, that's all. I think, like, we don't even know her name. There's only, like, guesses on her name or something like that. Yeah, those are Messers. I like those. Oh. And, oh, I thought that was the Kimberland unit. The Kimberly unit. They're not from that base in Africa. That may or may not still be there. Yeah, so they're going to go down a fire escape, I believe. I think I translated that right. Right, all enemy units within four turns. So there's six of them. Basically, what we got to do is we got to get everyone together, and then we just combo the shit out of them. Though, of course, our leader has horrible command, so we got to get in close. Yeah, this guy should be to here-ish. So we should be able to get those guys in two turns. The worry is these guys, assuming they move on the first turn. I'm really hoping they do. Yeah. Okay. Shouldn't be too hard then.
Yeah, so we have a beam saber, we have a grenade launcher, and a beam rifle. Sadly, they don't have the knuckle buster like they're supposed to. So those are Carl Gustavs. They're developed by they're developed by Anaheim to be the successor to the Jägen. So they lot they use Federation capable parts, but the only difference to them is that. Uh, they're heavily armored and they use a variable shield which like folds over the shoulder when needed and then folds back. The only problem is they're not actually that efficient. They're actually heavy armored and rather slow. So they never got picked up and said the James gun was chosen because it's cheap and light. Mm-hmm. And I believe all eight, uh, all eight messers they have got destroyed. So we're gonna move you here, and we're going to beam rifle you and you. Totally gonna lose, mate. Alright, and then we want to move you to here. Yeah, that should I'll try to show you the beam saber too if I get the chance. It'll probably be on one of those guys up top though. Um or maybe one of these guys, who knows? Can he not reach? No, he's just short. Okay. You know, we'll show you right after this turn then. Okay, so. We're gonna kill this guy, then we'll have this guy move over to here, shoot this one, we'll double back with this one, and then we'll melee him after it's over. Assuming we don't run out of energy. I didn't actually consider that. And now we're good. Ooh, you're low, though. Yeah. Oh, well. I don't think we'll ever get to control Carl Gustavs, or maybe we'll switch to the Federation side next time, which might actually make sense with the final battle thinking about it. But I'll try to show you their melee when we get the chance. Yeah, so we can reach there, but this guy's gonna move down, shoot us, and then this guy's gonna move over and shoot us as well. So what we'll do is we'll move up here, double shoot the guy we already shot, and then have all three finish off the final one. Or he's gonna melee us, I didn't consider that. I'm just curious to see if they have a combined animation or not. And 
just so I can be, just in case. Yeah, I figured they'd be the exact same loadout. This game does that more than I would like. Oh, did we fail? Was that five turns or four? No, we have one more. Good. No. That sucks. Yeah, we killed him. He didn't get a chance to hit back. We win. Eh, the Penelope. I like the Penelope, it's pretty badass. I don't know why, but I always felt like the Penelope looked more like a Xeon mobile suit than a Federation one. But, you know, Xeon gets the, well, not Xeon, but the evil people get the more normal looking Gundam, whereas the Federation gets the cool looking one. Always felt backwards to me. I don't think the I don't even know the pilot's name for that matter. Like I don't remember having him any personality whatsoever. At least it's not as bad as Reber, where his only thing of his personality was, "Hey, I like to kill people." I'm gonna talk about killing because killing. And I believe this guy, uh, Kenneth, is one of Bright's friends. He was like an underling and. Right to come on as a protege kind of thing. You might say Mufti is a maiden of the revolution. Not Jenna Arc, by the way. <laughs> All your enemies are Gundams. God damn it. How much work I've tried to tell people. A mobile suit, not a Gundam. So there's this thing in when Japanese people write light novels, they'll like they'll say a line and then they'll be like, so in short, and they'll explain the line again, and then the next line they'll explain the next line and then re explain two lines previously. And I think it was this one where like I just got in my book and I like started crossing out whole lines because it's just like, yeah, let's repeat the same thing over and over again. Yeah. And just for the reference, Cersei is the one who turns a lot of uh, Ulysses' crew into animals because they slept on his, her island and ate her food without asking. And then Ulysses has sex with her like 30 times for 10 years. And then he leaves the island with 
I think 24 of his crew. I used to know Ulysses a lot better than I do now. That's how you know this isn't an anime. All the characters are actually forward about their thinking. I also really like the orange and white paint job. Oh, it's more like orange and tan. Yeah, shoot halfway while you're at it. That'll save you a lot of issues later. Oh, so he's a cyber new type? I thought it was a normal new type. Yeah, so we're killing that guy. Don't care. He spilled the beans. He's clearly a spy. <laughs> 